Hello everyone. Welcome to KVHN Engineering uh, YouTube channel. All right. So uh, today I'm going to teach you about the procedure how to tow an aircraft. All right. So uh, if you still not see the previous lessons, please uh, check out the card uh, in in the screen, and you can check the play playlist of uh, Airbus A320 type training lessons, like I did before the general and uh, also jacking procedure. So uh, today is towing procedure. Okay. So let's go to the uh, lesson. All right, so this lesson will teach you how to tow an airplane with the nose gear from the front of the aircraft. All right. Okay, so before you tow or push back the aircraft, you must obey the warning and cautions. All right, so I will read uh, the warnings first. The warning makes sure that the ground safety blocks are in positions on the landing gear. And uh, another one, make sure that when the aircraft moves with its power on the ground, no persons go where the aircraft can cause them injury or can kill them. No objects stay where the engines can blow them away or can pull them into the engines by suction. And obey these safety precautions uh, during towing, pushback or movement of the aircraft. Make sure that the path of the aircraft is clear. Make sure that no person sit or stand on the tow bar or use the tractor as transport. This is to prevent the risk of injury. And the person who operates the brakes from the cockpit during towing, taxing must have his seat belt uh, attached. Okay, if not, uh, there is a risk of injury if the aircraft stops suddenly. All right, so let's go to the cautions. Uh, set and calibrate the towing and turn shear pins before you tow or push back the aircraft. This is to prevent high loads which can cause damage to the nose landing gear and or the aircraft structure. And do not tow or move the aircraft on the ground if the engine's cows are open. So movement of the aircraft with the cows open can cause damage to the cows and the nasal structure. All right. So now let's see how to push back or tow the aircraft. Normally, the aircraft is towed or pushed back with the engine shut down or running at idle. So you, you have to keep it remember. All right. So now first ensure that the landing gears have safety devices installed right so first we have to ensure that the landing gears the safety devices are already installed correctly so you can see in here in this picture the main landing gear safety locks are installed and here you can see the uh, nose landing gear safety uh, locks are installed it means actual nose landing gear safety pin is installed all right so next one, the wheel chocks has to be in place and check the parking brake is on, right? So here you have to check the wheel chocks has to be in place. This is the nose landing gear and also you have to check the main landing gear wheel also. And then you have to check the parking brake is on, right? Here is the parking brake. You have to check this is uh, in on positions, right? If the parking brake is on, you can see this light in the nose landing gear, uh, this box. And you can check the accumulator pressure, right? All right. So then do not tow the aircraft if the dimension of H is more than 300 millimeter. It means 11.8 inches, right? So here is the H. It means this from here to here, the H. This height, if it is more than 300 millimeters, do not tow the aircraft, right? If you do, it means if you tow the aircraft, you can cause damage to the internal centering cams of the nose landing gear. So if you tow this aircraft uh, more than 300 millimeters length, then uh, in the inside the nose landing gear, they have a centering cam. So I will discuss in the uh, ATA chapter 32 less, uh, uh, lesson series. So uh, the internal centering cams can be damaged, right? All right. So referring to the AMM or aircraft maintenance manual, make sure that the aircraft is stable. Assume that the procedure was carried out correctly. And depending on the configurations, the aircraft must be energized either in APU as a specific ground guard with the engine running or by using the tractor itself. All right. So assume the aircraft has already been energized and the EIS task procedure has been completed. All right. So now let's go to outside the nose wheel steering deactivated electrical box, set the ground towing control lever to the towing positions and install the pin, right? So before you tow the aircraft, first thing you have to do is first you go to the uh, steering deactivated electrical box here and then set the towing control lever. This is the towing control lever to the towing position. This is the towing position and install the 
screen all right uh, in the cockpit on the upper ecam in the cockpit there's a uh, two ecams there so upper ecam page the nose wheel steering disconnect nose wheel steering disconnect this message comes into view on the memo page so you can see in this one see upper ecam you can see nose wheel steering disconnect uh, message comes into view on the memo page so this message will come after you install this pin right okay sorry uh okay so then check on the yellow brake pressure triple indicator this is the yellow brake pressure triple indicator the accumulator pointer is in the green bridge right so yellow indicator triple uh triple in yellow pressure uh, sorry yellow brake pressure triple indicator the accumulator pressure pointer is in the green range right you have to make sure that and then recommended is kind of recommended to pressurize the yellow hydraulic system using yellow electrical pump so you have to pressurize the yellow hydraulic system using yellow electrical pump okay here uh, here you can see this is the hydraulic section so this is the yellow electrical pump okay all right um all right so then uh, thus the braking system will be more efficient and safer why this is recommending to pressurize the yellow hydraulic system using electrical pump because it, uh, the braking system will be more efficient then and safer right okay so then now we have to install the tow bar then we have to install the tow bar to the aircraft okay so make sure that the tow bar has the damping system we have to make sure the tow bar has a damping system a calibrated shear pin two calibrated turn shear pins this is to prevent high load causing damage to the landing gear right so these are the shear pins over there right and also refer to amm to calibrations of the pins to calibrate the pins you have to refer the aircraft maintenance manual all right, so now install the tow bar on the nose landing gears, tow fitting and connect the tow bar to the tractor. So you can connect this one to the tractor and uh, I will show another picture in later uh, how uh, the connection to the aircraft. So then put the parking brake control lever in the off positions before you tow or push back the aircraft, right? Before you tow or push back the aircraft, you have to make the parking brake into uh off positions right into off positions and this is to prevent load causing damage to the nose landing gear right okay so on the yellow brake pressure triple indicator the brake pressure pointers go down right after you off the parking brake then yellow brake pressure triple indicator the brake pressure here the brake pressure pointers go down okay brake pressures pointers go down Right, so the in the cockpit set the lightning system. We have to set the lightning system. Set the exterior light navigation and logo switch on. See exterior light navigation and logo switch have to be on at the night. Set the interior light dome lights to be bright. And if the anti-collision lightning is necessary according to the local airport regulations or the airline procedure, set the exterior light beacon switch to on. Right, exterior light beacon switch we have to on. Right, so then on the VHF system, in the VHF system. This is the VHS system. In order to communicate with the control tower during the towing operations, release out the VHF push buttons. Here, the VHF push button, switch and select the control tower frequency. So, we have to select the control tower frequency by using this one. And uh, on the radio management panel, this is the radio management panel. Uh, okay. So, it means uh, we have to push this one, VHF and VHF1. We have to push these buttons and then select the release out and switch and uh, uh, we have to select the control tower frequency and uh, put this button to active mode all right okay so then in order to communicate the ground mechanic on the audio control panel set the in uh, int ARAD, rad switch to the interphone positions and release out the interphone receptions push button right so here is the push button so we have to push to uh, interphone positions and uh, release out the interphone reception push button right this is the interphone push button we have to push and release out okay all right so actually this thing we have to do it before uh of the parking brakes uh, normally right so for safety reasons the distance of three meters right for safety reason the distance of three meters i mean 10 feet must be kept clear around the nose wheel tow bar and the tractor when the aircraft move in the aircraft move we have to keep three meters uh clear right distance clear all right so now the speed limitations passenger crew doors positions and cargo door positions so towing speed limitations depend on the positions of the passenger crew and cargo doors and for the speed limitations refer to the aircraft maintenance manual 
All right, so the towing angle limitations, you can say the maximum permitted steering angle on each side of the aircraft center line is 95 degrees, right? So this is the maximum permitted angles, each side of the aircraft center line. So when you use the front fitting to push the aircraft, it means if you use this front fitting to push the aircraft, rearwards with the engine at idle, with the engine at idle, this angle is limited to 40 degrees. At this point, be sure that all warnings and cautions of the aircraft maintenance manual procedures and previous precautions are applied. All right, so now, now that now the aircraft can be towed slowly, then we can tow the aircraft slowly and safely. Two other persons have to monitor the wing tips. So two other persons have to monitor the two wing tips during the towing operations, and one person is required in the cockpit in order to operate the brakes. One person is there, right? So when you complete the towing operations, now we'll see how to uh, stop the curving towing operations. When you complete the towing operation, make sure that the nose wheels are aligned. Okay, nose wheels are aligned with the aircraft center line. Now inform the cockpit to apply the parking brakes. After you finish, after you come to the destination, you have to inform to the cockpit uh, to apply the parking brake and check the parking brake light is on in the nose wheel steering deactivate steering box, right? So you have to check this parking brake light is on and then the brakes coming like this and we have to own this parking brake. If we, after we own the parking brake, we can see these two uh, indications. And then put the wheel chocks in positions. After that, we have to put the wheel chocks in position. Disconnect the tow bar from the nose gear field, right? So then we have to disconnect. We have to lift it up and uh, uh, disconnect this uh, tow bar from the aircraft nose wheel. All right, so on the nose wheel steering deactivate electrical box, remove the safety pin and set the ground towing control lever to the normal position, right? So after that, we have to release the pin and then we have to keep it the ground towing control lever to the normal position, right? So at the same time in the cockpit on the ECAM memo display, the message nose wheel steering disconnect is disappear, right? So here I, I, I tell in the before when you uh, put the uh, when you engage the uh, control lever, steering control lever, then this message will appear. And if you uh, disconnect, I mean, uh, disconnect this control lever, then nose wheel steering disconnect uh, uh, message will disappear. All right. Okay. So on the lightning system, reset the exterior light beacon, navigations logo switch to off. Right, so here the beacon lights and the logo switches, right? So then we have to make it to off and reset the interior light dome switch to off. Right, so on the communication system, on the communication system, cut the cockpit control tower VHF link by pressing the VHF push button on the radio management panel and reset the INT RAD switch to the neutral position. We have to make it this one to uh, radio uh, neutral position. All right, so depressurize the yellow hydraulic system, then we can depressurize the yellow hydraulic system, do the EIS stop procedure and de-energize the aircraft electrical circuit. All right, so that is the end of uh, this lesson. So I think you got some knowledge how to tow an aircraft through this uh, lesson. So uh, thank you for uh, joining for this lesson. And uh, in, as the next lesson, uh, I'm going to discuss some uh, questions regarding aircraft general, uh, aircraft jacking and aircraft towing. So I will uh, going to discuss around 10 or 15 uh, questions and I will give you the proof and the answers. All right. So uh, we will stop today lesson. And if you still not subscribe my YouTube channel, uh, Kaviation Engineering YouTube channel, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And also don't forget to share this uh, video. And also if you like this video, just like and comment below if you have any questions. All right. Okay. So uh, see you in next video. Have a good day for all of you.